What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Mike Zuniga Films Podcast. This is a more entrepreneurship-focused episode, yet still in the creative space. On this episode, I have with me Danielle Weber. She's an artist and entrepreneur based in Melbourne, Australia. Danielle shares how she turned her passion for painting into a full-time business, with her work extending to Hollywood actors such as Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Olympians, sports stars, leading business leaders, brands, and more. So without further ado, Danielle Weber. Hey, Danielle. How's it going? Good, thanks. How are you? Pretty good. Thanks for uh, being on the podcast. Well, thanks for, well, what's the time there? It's eight o'clock here. Yeah, thanks for calling. <laughs> Probably yeah, a crazy well, hour. <laughs> yeah, thanks for being on so early. It's actually one in the afternoon here. So, okay. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's the, that's the time difference, you know, between here and uh, Australia. It's strange, so. isn't it? It is. It We're is. Like it's a crazy. Day ahead of you. <laughs> it's crazy to think. You know, yeah. I, I think like well, the for me personally, like the closest I've been in that that time zone. I went to the Philippines about two years ago, okay. and so yeah. like the time difference was kind of like a big shift for me. But you get used to it. You know. Yeah. True. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I wanted to have you on the podcast just because you know I've seen your work on Instagram. And it's very unique. And the the people that you've been able to connect with through your artwork um, has been awesome. So I first want to start off with traveling because I know you like to travel and I want to get into that because that's one of your interests. So um, what interests you most about traveling or like what was like a recent place that you went to go travel to? Um, so I, I guess I started traveling when I was quite young, I was eight, 19, when I sort of just threw myself on a plane. Um, and it was just a sense of adventure and not knowing where the hell I was going that I liked initially. Um, recently, where have I traveled to recently? I've been to Vietnam last year. Um, where else? I went to Europe last year as well. Um, I guess I've slowed down on the travel now that my career has exploded a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. So sort of trying to set my priorities straight because travel used to be my number one priority behind, um, in front of university as well. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, I've been to 44 countries, I think, something like 44? that. 44? Yeah, yeah. Wow. So I'd literally just like paint and work two jobs and study and save and then go away, go into debt, come back, do the same thing. Um, and I think, I think it did contribute to, um, well, probably, it probably motivated me to paint, like being able to travel was motivating me to paint vice versa. So I was like, well, if I paint this and sell this, then I, (laughs) yeah. So not selling it for much, but yeah, it was sort of, it was, um, my motivation, I guess. Yeah. So, and I guess now when I travel, it's more to take a break and to like keep my passion alive. Cause if I don't do that, then yeah, I, I tend to get a little bit exhausted sometimes because um, when I am home and I'm in my studio and I'm working on murals, I don't really have a pause or a stop button. So when I travel, it like it's a physical break, maybe not a mental break so much, but it's more of a physical break. So, well, that's good because yeah. you're you're just so focused. I'm sure on like when you have a project, like you're you're in it yeah. and like game you're <laughs> it's game on pretty yeah. much. And so yeah. having like a kind of like a pause in time to like get out of the space that you're in majority of the time is good. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I think you, if you don't take those breaks, you, you may become a bit resentful towards what you do, which I think it's okay. I think everyone, I think where people get confused is if it's a passion, they think that you have to love it every day, which I don't think that's true. Like I think you're all right to wake up and be like, I don't want to paint today. I don't like my, I don't like what I do today. So I think that's where people freak out and like, Oh, that's my passion. I should be loving this, you know, through and through, but it's not, I don't think that's the case. So I just listen to myself now and I'm like, okay, I need a break. That's it. But to, if I need four, I just had four weeks off painting. I didn't feel like painting. So, um, yeah, it, it's hard. It's hard because it, you feel like, oh, what's wrong with me? Am I ever going to want to paint again? But you just got to do that. And travel's good for that, I guess. Yeah, 100%. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, honestly, there's times too when, you know, I'm, you know, filming or I have to edit and I don't feel inspired yeah for like a certain video and i know that (laughs) yeah and if i force it i'm not going to get like the same result that i want to and then i I take a little bit of time off and then i get back to it and then everything like clicks so yeah it's it's interesting how that works sometimes 
Yeah, well, you can sit there like trying to force yourself for 10 hours or you can take an eight-hour break and the last two hours you smash it out. So same, same, really. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. So I want to kind of like get into your start. Like how did you start uh, into creating art? Um, Was that from an early age or did it kind of develop over time? Yeah, it was was definitely from an early age. Um, I grew up with no technology and if we did have tv time it was limited to i think 20 minutes or something or that we had 20 minutes of technology a day so we could go on the computer that was just like the black screen with the tetris on it it was nothing really (laughs) exciting so um or we could watch tv for i think 20 minutes so that um yeah that that really forced like me and my siblings to do hands-on things like we're playing in the streets we went on ipads and um so from when I could pick up a pen, I was drawing next to my brother, just copying what he was doing. It was two years between us. He's two years older. And, um, yeah, probably would have been like three or four years old. And even before that, I was always doing hands-on things like playing with Play-Doh and clay. And, um, yeah, so and then at primary school and school, I guess that's something that I've always, let you know, went back to all the time. I was always drawing and I always enjoyed it. So, but I guess finishing um, high school, I don't know what's equivalent to your school. <laughs> um, I was about 18 when I finished that. So uh-huh. um, I just thought I thought everyone could paint or draw, but I just enjoyed it more than other people. So um, it wasn't something that I was going to pursue until my mum said, what are you going to study? And I was like, I'm going to do health sciences. And she's like, where's your art? And I'm like, I'm not going to make a living out of being an artist. <laughs> so I... Yeah, I was convinced that it just wasn't, you know, because it, it, as you said, like it's a starving artist. It, you've, you've heard all those stories. So it's like why would I want to pursue something that's not going to be guaranteed? Um, and I guess that's what fear that's instilled in us as creatives. They're like, well, mm. do, you know, you've got to live. Like well, how are you? And that, I guess that is the reality that you don't know where you're going to go. But are you going to be unhappy for the rest of your life <laughs> if you don't, mm. you know, attempt um, pursuing it? So yeah, it was, I, I studied a double degree in health sciences and arts and just began to paint um, pretty much for free. I just charged people for the materials, which was like 40 bucks, probably not even what it was worth. <laughs> and um, eventually just it sort of evolved. It wasn't something that I was like, okay, let's start a business. It was just doing more and more work and more and more people were asking and I was like, oh, maybe I should start charging now. So sort of that was when I finished school. That was over 10 years ago. Whoa. No, nine years ago now. Mm. So, yeah. So I've wow. been on this journey for nine years now. The, 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 the serious art journey. <laughs> yeah, this, the yeah. serious art journey. Yeah. 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 It, if, I'm sure it flies by. And I mean, you know, people think like, okay, it happens overnight. But especially with something like art, like what you do, it's a progression. Like you just yeah. don't get good the next day. Like, nah. like honestly, I went and... I went to the beginning kind of of where you started posting like your artwork because I wanted to just see the. I always like to see the progression and then over time I saw it like getting better and better and better and that's the way it should be it's like you have to have patience with it you know yeah and that's where for the the, I guess you could argue people like oh talent versus hard work and I was like oh I don't know what the I used to think the percentage was like 50 50 and now I'm more like at the 40 40 percent talent 60 percent mm-hmm. hard work and probably leaning to more more than 30 70 you know <laughs> and people like conor mcgregor like really really um back that they they you mm-hmm. know they say yeah you can be talented unless you work hard unless it's an obsession like you're not going to get there you got to put all the hours you know you can into it it's um yeah so that's um yeah it, it is scary looking back at some of my other work that used <laughs> to think was so good and i look back now i'm like that's so bad but I, I, guess, I do I do the yeah. same with 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 my videos too. Like the yeah. ones in the past, I'm like, ah, you know. Yeah. But yeah. that's okay. It's yeah, just part of the journey. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, I feel sorry for that person who has that painting, but then I'm like, that's all part of the journey. So <laughs> I didn't pay as much back then, so you get what yeah. you pay for. <laughs> yeah, you're just starting out. You're just yeah. starting out. Yeah. yeah. So you went to university, right? Yeah. And then you said you majored in health sciences and art as well at the same time. Yeah, so I did a double a double degree, which was five years all up. Um, mm-hmm. So it was a it was a pretty lengthy um, course, 
And um, it's funny because I didn't actually enjoy studying art. I was, I hated it, to be honest with you, to be mm. quite like, but I knew that if I wasn't there painting, I probably wouldn't have kept painting, if that makes sense. Like it would just, yeah. just sort of make, it forced me to like keep exploring and to put, you know, to push through it. Whereas I feel like you, there's so many people who are in that frustration stage of like, I'm not good. And they just give up because it's painful. It's not, it's not nice. Like you feel like you should be better at something and you're not. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it just sort of kept, I hung in there because of, I was studying art and I was like, well, you know, oh, I'm a year down now. There's no point in going back. Oh, I'm two years down now. I might as well keep going. So right. I love studying health sciences. I mean, I majored in um, food studies and nutrition and like health promotion. And I absolutely loved it. So I, I, I used to want to be a food scientist. So oh, really? work, that, work that one out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't imagine being in a lab or in a factory, though so I'd probably drive myself and everyone crazy. So I'm glad I'm not. Maybe one day, who knows? Maybe, yeah, but right now, you know, you yeah, you <laughs> see. That's the thing. Like, um, there's always it's always good to have kind of like a a backup plan. I mean, yeah. especially like when you're going through college, like you think you're doing one thing, but it might shift like all of a sudden, like it happened yeah. to you. Like you were taking yeah. health sciences. You're also doing art on the side, yeah. but it kind of eventually shifted over to the art. Side. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. Did you, did you, <laughs> I'm just, yeah, it's strange. Like it is strange. It, it is strange. Cause I was sort of, while I was studying, I it wasn't really a conscious thought. Like I wasn't really like, oh, I'm studying health sciences. But yeah, I, I guess it all just happened. It just evolved. Like it didn't. It didn't happen like overnight. Um, and I guess up until I was sort of, it was yeah, it was like five years into my course. I still thought that it wasn't going to be my future path. Oh really? So it was like yeah. even until like the very end, and yeah. you're still like iffy yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that was yeah five years into sort of like my art journey uh-huh. that I was still like oh not not sure about it. So, um, and that that's when I met the Rock. So it was a good time. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah. So, so I, before we get into the Rock, I yeah. want to talk about college just for a little bit. What were some of like the pros and cons? Did you see about like you know going to university? <laughs> Um, pros. I think at the time I was like, oh, what am I doing this for? This is a waste. Now looking at um, the skills that I developed throughout university, um, being able to write emails, I was, you know, because a lot of people are like, oh, education, like you don't need it. But then when you do, you know, have a business and you have to deal with corporates and you have to be writing emails to people who have been in the game for, you know, 40, 50 years, mm-hmm. um, str- simple things like that, like being able to write emails in a professional manner with good grammar. Um, right. I think they're the basics that I literally was like, I am so grateful I went to university because it kept me writing. And it, I mean, sometimes I, I don't, I don't read much. So I think that I'm like, oh, my vocabulary is so bad at the moment. <laughs> like I need to go back to school, but <laughs> Um, so things like that, and then also, I guess um, it was a it was a commitment, and it was you know something that you're like, okay, I'm I'm spent like I'm in thirty thousand dollar debt from university, which I don't I don't resent now, but you're sort of like, mm-hmm. okay, I'm spending a lot of money on something that's going to benefit myself, but you don't see those benefits there at that point in right. time. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I I, I feel like. In that sense, I think any education that you do is valuable. Like no, no one can take that away from you. Um, mm. So pros, yeah, just it made me realise what I did not did want for the art world and what I didn't want for the art world. Like my art teacher was very much like, oh, go find other artists and paint their stuff. And I was like, why am I painting someone else's stuff? Like can't I paint my own things? And I, I was quite like I had quite a few run-ins with the teachers. And then... <laughs> I was like, that's exactly what I don't want to be like. And I probably don't want to end up miserable at a school if I want mm-hmm. to be a full-time artist. So that would mm-hmm. probably motivate me even more. So I guess I took more pros than cons from university, from college. That's again. good. Um, yeah. 
Cons is probably I didn't go enough. That was my problem. I didn't attend. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't need to go to that lecture because I did ended up doing really well. Like I finished both. I don't know if distinctions mean anything to you in your college. Um, I mean, yeah, degree. there's, I guess, still distinctions. I yeah. finished both of both of my degrees on distinctions and I literally, That's good. I should have attended more than, like I did, I probably didn't deserve, if you looked at like attendance ratio to distinction probably didn't deserve them but <laughs> that's another pro I mean, from it <laughs> i think that's i think that's for like every college student yeah. like i've honestly skipped classes before there's one time when um i skipped class to shoot a music video yeah and we went up to like because i went to school up in state of washington so it was like all green and mountainy and stuff. And so we went out to the mountains to shoot a music video. I was like, I'm not missing that. I'm yeah, de- definitely yeah, skipping class to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that's fine. I mean, it's just Priorities. part of college, you know? It's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, so The yeah. Rock, you know, you, you talked about The Rock. So what happened there? Well, I was I was doing a painting for a client and um, – it took me ages to do it. I didn't know what I was doing. I was fluffing around on it, but um, he was super Was this patient. after university? No. So I was in my last, my last semester, which would have been my last eight, eight weeks. Okay. Or however long they go for, I don't even remember. <laughs> um, but I, in the break, I'd actually gone overseas. Mm-hmm. And um, so, but before then I, I was finishing a painting and he saw it online and um, shared it. Oh, sorry, he commented on it. And I was like, "Whoa!" It came out of the blue. This is on Instagram. Yeah, it was on Instagram. Like I knew who he was, but I, I've never really with celebrities. I'm like, "Oh, they're cool." Like they, you know, but, and I, I value like what they, what they're about, and what you know how they motivate people, etc. But I was never really yeah. fan yelling over him. Like I know a lot of people do. And um, yeah, when he commented, I was like, "Whoa!" And then I finished it. He shared it, and he was like, "Looking forward to meeting you one day." And I was like, "This is crazy. It's not really something I chased, but." Uh-huh. Um, and then to say thank you for him basically taking the time to, you know, shout me out and whatnot. Um, cause at that point I, I can't remember how much my Instagram grew, but it was easier for an Instagram to grow at that point back then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, cause it was, yeah, coming up to five years ago now and what are we, 2019, four years ago. So, um, sorry ago. about that. Yep. And so I did a painting of him and his mum to mm-hmm. thank him for, for what he's, he did for me. Um, and I was going to America anyway. So rolled the painting up, took it with me, and basically um, was doing a bit of solo travel in Cuba where I'd run into a lot of trouble because my credit cards weren't working. And oh, no. luckily I had family from Italy somewhere in Cuba. So I got on a plane to go get money from them. Otherwise I would have been stuck. Oh, that's um, good. <laughs> but I still carry the painting around with me everywhere. I nearly lost it in transit through Mexico because I left it at a restaurant and I was at the gate oh, and I was like, I no. I'm missing something. I was like, I don't know where this do it. Um, anyways, but I was in my last few days in um, Cuba and he, oh no, sorry, I was in Miami and I was like, oh, I'm here. Like, and I did a post and he was like, mm-hmm. what? Like you're in America. And he got his social media manager to contact me. Uh-huh. And then I gave her my details and he, he gave me a text, hit me up with a text like a week later. So, um, yeah. And then I was already three weeks into uni, I think, mm-hmm. back in. And I was not there. Um, <laughs> or maybe it was two <laughs> weeks at that point. Yeah. And um, I sort of just made the decision. I was like, nah, I'm here now. Like, I'm just going to get on a plane. And he was in Boston filming Central Intelligence. Mm-hmm. And then after getting held up at customs and getting in trouble for taking tequila and cigars for him, um, I missed my flight. So I got on the last one and he, he, when I finally get to Boston, he's like, oh, let me know when you're in LA. And I was like, Ugh. I've just cancelled all my flights that were going to LA oh, and no. like changed them to go to Boston. I was uh-huh. like, no, nah, I'm here. Sorry. And he was just like, that day I um, went and met him on set and hung out with him. He introduced me to everyone on set with him. Um, and we sort of kept in contact after that Mm -hmm. and, um, he's been following me ever since. So I guess knowing that I had his support has always been like a good, a good motivation. Um, and I guess I have wanted to paint him again since Mm -hmm. then, but because I knew of our connection, I didn't, 
I didn't want to paint him just anywhere or for anyone because I my main thing about where I paint is the appreciation. If people don't mm-hmm. appreciate it, I don't really care how much I'm getting paid, what I'm doing. Um, if that level of appreciation isn't there, just a simple thank you, then I, right. I don't, and especially not The Rock because he, like, I hold him, you know, with high regard and he's done a lot for me and my career. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I, yeah, I did paint him at a gym that I, um, a local gym, probably about 10 minutes down the mm-hmm. road recently and he saw that and he was like about bloody time like he's sort of been waiting for me to that was like the huge yeah. mural yeah on the wall yeah. yeah that was pretty sick yeah so um yeah it was cool he hit me he hit me up again and we're sort of just in contact for a bit um just texting and he's yeah he's such a legend like literally oh, yeah. just talks to me like my friends and yeah it, it's that's super awesome cool. super cool so I don't harass him. Everyone's like, do you stay in contact with him? I'm like, he's the busiest person I know. I'm not going to message him every week. Oh, yeah. Like, hey, you have to give him going? a space, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but yeah, now it's awesome. I know if he ever came out to Australia, I'd hit him up and we'd catch up or whatever. But, um, and same, same goes. I, he was in London last month and he's like, if you're on this side of the world. And I was like, my schedule's looking really crazy. I don't think it was <laughs> actually December that he was there. So he's like, uh-huh. I'll say hi. We'll celebrate like your, your mural. And, but I had a lot going on, so I couldn't. Everyone's like, go to London. I was like, it's pretty far. Like, it's over 24 hours of travel. So, <laughs> Yeah, I can't just like, you yeah, know, hop on a plane and just plane. go there. Yeah. Yeah. So, but that's yeah. good though. That, that's good you still stay connected with them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's one of those relationships that's important, you know. Yeah. It's, it's a respect thing for sure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I do owe a lot to him. So he knows that I know that. So, um, mm-hmm. and I make sure I tell him that too. So, Yeah. It's not every day that you have someone like him and everyone loves him too. Like you don't, you know, there's celebrities like, oh, I don't like, I don't like that. But literally I've never heard a bad word come out of anyone's mouth about him. He's so highly respected. So it's awesome. Yeah. So like, did you, after that whole thing happened um, and then after you graduated, did you kind of figure out like, okay, maybe I can take this full time or like go all in it? Like what was the process after that happened? Yeah, things kind of blew up, but I had to finish my course. It was not wrong timing, but it was very hard to balance the influx of inquiries, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So I just held myself together, finished my degree, turned down like a few interviews and things like that because I was like, I can't do this at this point. Like if I'm not going to, you know, I can't throw away five five years of study. Yeah. Um, and then after that, I guess, yeah, he, he basically instilled in me, he's like, you'd be stupid not to pursue, you know, this, like, cause I asked him things like, you know, why, why did you stop? And, you know, like there's better artists out there. There's more talented, there's more creative, there's more, you know, mm-hmm. um, and he's like, oh, it was just like your smile. Like you're always smiling, you know, just to, <laughs> and I was like, okay. So he's like, it's not just your work. Like it's your whole, you know, persona. Yeah. Yeah. So I think. He just he just basically you know pushed pushed me to be like okay this is something I'm gonna have a crack at um, and I still didn't really like dive head first like I've always taken this slow everyone's like you could do this you could do that you could have a team of artists and I'm like I know I probably could I probably could be earning a lot more than what I'm earning now but I think it's something that needs to evolve otherwise you know how you hear businesses go under people get too excited you know mm-hmm. and that's how people burn and and crash i've just always taken it easy and yeah even when speaking to him recently he had like goals set for me he's like i said the goal on this one was to get to this many followers Mm -hmm. and you know eventually connect you with bigger brands he's like slow and even out of his mouth he's like slow and steady wins the race like we're not sprinting here so it's Mm -hmm. things like that that i really take from people like the rock um yeah not so much his fame or his money or anything it's more like those little keynotes that i take notes so yeah that's good i think that's much more important because people can get lost in like the fame aspect of things like you know i want more people to know about me but it's more so like what you were saying you know like just those little things to help you personally kind of elevate your game as an artist the quality is more important than anything else yeah, 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 definitely. You're right. No, that's um, that's a good point. Yeah. Now, did you, did you um, after after that happened and like you're starting to do more art, were you still 
uh, in a job or are you currently still in a job or is, is this your, your full time thing? Yeah. Yeah. Business? So I, I got, I think I got sacked from a supermarket job because I traveled too much. Um, <laughs> so, and I remember her saying that she's like, she was like, Oh, you, you're going to, you, you need, you need money. Like you need this job. And I was like, nah, I don't really. I'm like, it's fine. Like, and yeah. so cause I was coaching tennis as well. So, cause I used to play tennis. So I was coaching. Okay. Well. And, um, and I think, I think losing that job made me a little bit more serious about my paintings and actually made me start, you know, charging for my time rather, rather, rather than doing them all for free. Mm-hmm. So um, that was it. I think it was the start of, 2013 so it's six years ago now okay but i i i it's i think it's been my sole income for about five years very cool yeah that's good yeah how did how did you start realizing or kind of monetize figure out how to monetize your artwork because it's 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 kind of different from anything else it's not like a sole product Yeah, you know, it's yeah. a process. So how do you monetize that? It is, yeah. So I, I started off slow. I was sort of at the start. It was like, okay, how many hours am I spending on this piece? Let's and and people always ask me. They come to me and they say, how do you charge? And I said, as long as you're happy with what you're charging, that's all that matters. I'm like, what I charge, I might not be happy with. You might not be happy with. So it's, you know, it's it's irrelevant. Like you can't go ask other people what their rate is and whatnot because it's it's all individual. And you might value yourself higher than what someone else values you values yourself at that point in mm-hmm. in their career. So yeah, at the start, I guess it was just being covered for the time that I was putting in, which wasn't much at all. And my attitude was, and it still is, you win some, you lose some. Honestly, yeah. like I think it's like you have to adapt that, otherwise, it's you always feel like you're losing. I think mm-hmm. um, so as I became like more in demand, as more people um, came to me and said, Oh, Hey, like I want a painting, I would up my prices. And if they said no, which is what, you know, you're going to face when you put up your prices, that was no loss to me because I had so much work anyway. Mm -hmm. So, and it's sort of, yeah, like I haven't been without work since then. Um, But I guess it was, I sort of went back to, not back to square one. When I started murals, I felt like I couldn't really charge what I probably should have been charging because I didn't have that experience. Like I was literally stuck on a blank canvas again, being like, I'm painting on someone's wall and could royally F that up. Like I'm just like, (laughs) it's different from a canvas. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So I felt like I sort of went back 10 steps then, but then Uh my capacity to earn now is a lot bigger. Yeah. But I threw myself under the bus. Like I feel like murals are something that you can't go to school and learn. Like you've just got to do it Mm. and, and, make mistakes and that's how you're going to learn. So, um, which is a little bit more <laughs> frightening than making a mistake on someone's yeah. kitchen wall as opposed yeah. to a canvas that you then not, not going to see until it's finished. But, um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, charging and, and knowing your worth, there's, there's still days that I wake up and I'm like, oh, I probably quoted too much. Like you doubt yourself all the time. Um, I'm lucky that i got management now so they take that they do quote a lot of my bigger jobs now and they quote on a practical level. So they're not overthinking things. Whereas if I do a Uh quote, I'm like, Oh, let's put it down. Oh no, let's put it up. Oh, let's put it down. And you just fight, you just battle, just constant battles with yourself. So yeah. So, but I think even in the whole of five years, even no matter how much I was earning or no matter how well I was doing, there's still that doubt every day that you don't know if it's something that's just sustainable for the rest of your Mm. life even still now, like I'm like, Oh, is this something I'm going to be out? Yeah. So I think, it just, yeah, that's crazy. But I, I think that, I think that goes for like any other entrepreneur because you know, everything rides on your shoulders, you mm. know? And, and I think that's what makes it exciting too, as well. Yeah, definitely. It, it's always something new every single day and yeah. you're pretty and much, you, you make your hassle. own. <laughs> yeah. You make yeah. your own, um, course, you know, you, yeah. you decide what course you want to go to. But it's either you win big or lose big. So it is so true. Yeah, but that's yeah. okay. That's part of it, you know. I talk to my boyfriend about it because he's got his own business as well now. Uh-huh. Um, and we just say we're like we do understand why people do the nine to five. Like I totally get it, especially when you're yeah. in like the dumps and you're like, oh my god, like why do I do this to myself? But then we're like, 
we determine how much we earn and how much we succeed. Like we're not, yeah. no one else determines that. So that's exciting. Like what you, what you just said, like that, that's so exciting. Like you never actually know. So if you can hack that, then go for it. If you can't, then that's something you need to decide. So, you know, yeah. you might, I might earn 10 grand in one week and then I don't earn anything for six weeks. So you just got to embrace that. Like, yeah, take exactly. Take for six weeks and then like meal, good meals for the, the other night. No, just kidding. Like, <laughs> I'm pretty lucky, but yeah. Well, that's yeah. good. I mean, the good thing is it's, it's been pretty consistent from what you've been saying. So that's, that's a plus for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So... Um, in terms of kind of like the murals, cause uh, you said you were doing canvases first, right. And then eventually you move on to murals. Uh, so first off with like canvases, were you just selling them like online, uh, from your website or yeah, it, was, it was Facebook, I think, but yeah, Facebook started it all. Um, was it a mix of like personalized and pre made ones or yeah, ma- mainly orders. Like, so people would come to me and be like, "Hey, I want this," and then so it was oh, okay. kind of a guaranteed sale that took the like the, the fear off, I guess, because you're like, "Okay, yeah. I'm going to get a bit of a payment after this," rather mm-hmm. you know not doing it and being, "I got to try sell this now." So, um, yeah, I was doing a lot of personal portraits, which was quite uh, soul destroying, I'd say. Mm-hmm. Um, we call I don't know like we call it why, why was that? <laughs> we, that's what we say as artists. Like if you're doing work, you don't you don't really want to do, but you have to do it because you go. Oh, get I see what you're saying. It is yeah. like oh, yeah. another prostitution job. Like that's what we call it. <laughs> that's probably a really bad way of putting it. Doesn't but, no, I, I understand. There's always there's always some work that you kind of like have to do, which is okay. Yeah. I mean, you're still it's still part of like what you love to do. I mean, like, you're still painting, you're doing all that, but it's not like okay. I'm doing like this is my dream my, job. My, my passion, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like my passion portrait type thing. Yeah, no, that's totally understandable. You know, that's yeah. totally understandable. So I think I, I that was that was a, uh, that was a long haul. I I did that for probably four, five years, six uh-huh. years, seven years, maybe I only stopped recently. So yeah, probably seven years, I'd say. Um, which I think I think as artists everyone sort of says, oh, I just want to do what I want to do. And like, people have to love that. But I think until you gain a certain level of respect um, and a certain level of skill, then you do have to do things that you may not want to be doing because otherwise, mm-hmm. you, you know, how are people going to trust you? You can't go to them and be like, Hey, just trust me with my creative instincts. Like they don't know you, they don't know your work. Um, so I, it's look, it's a safer route, I guess, but um, it was, I look back now, I'm like, it's the best thing I've done because now I do have that freedom because people put their faith in me to do that because I developed my skills through doing those things. Um, right. So I sort of did it the other way around. But, I mean, I hope, you know, that that'll that'll allow me to have a lifetime of sort of freedom rather than the other way around, sort of trying to hustle and trying to sell pieces that, you know, make sense to me but make sense, no sense to anyone else. So, yeah. yeah. No, that, that makes total sense. And I think that goes for, like, any other profession too. Like you have to build a portfolio. Usually from what I hear is, you know, you start off doing things for free and just getting compensated for your time, build your portfolio, eventually do work to where, you know, you're, you're getting paid. So you're building income. And then, like you said, eventually you you hit a point to where you can start, you know, charging and doing things for like what you want to do, you know, and get reached out to people or, or brands or companies that yeah. are paying higher prices for bigger pieces of art. So, yeah. yeah. And then how, how did you eventually move into murals? Um, I, ke- I kept getting asked and I was like, no, 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 no. Like that's uh, the anxiety around that is just too much. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think for like a year I said, no, no, no. And then I was like, okay, I'll give it a go. And I, and I did. And, and my first few murals, I was like, I have no idea what I'm doing. It was just like, fake it till you make it massively. And there were tears. I was just like, oh, my God, I've ruined this person's house. Like, oh, shit, there's pink paint everywhere. Uh-huh. Like, it was just, yeah, it was brutal. But it's it's good. I look back now and just laugh. And I still have so much to learn. Like, I'm an, I'm a, like, I'm an amateur in mural work. Like, <laughs> yeah, like I'm, yes. I'm got well, I mean, your, your, your murals look really good. So, I mean, I can't. I can't yeah. really tell. <laughs> I get, yeah, I get. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I mean, but I get it. Yeah, I get it for you. So yeah, 
yeah. from the artist's eye, you always you always can see things that you can make better yeah. for sure. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. So, yeah, because I saw that. Very good. Sorry, go. No, no, you go ahead. Um, yeah, again, like I think they're a good good route to take, but I think you just got to be ready for it because otherwise, you you know, if you're not ready for murals, people just want to jump into them. I think people who say, oh, my God, like, they're so cool. I want to just, I, like, I mean, I did six years of painting on canvases and perfecting pe- canvases before I transitioned. So I think you, you've got to be ready. Otherwise, if you throw yourself in the deep end, um, uh, I had tears and I thought I was ready and I wasn't and that made me never want to do a mural again. So I think it might be a little bit off-putting if you're not ready. So that's just a little tip. <laughs> what is What is one difference between painting on a canvas and a mural besides like the size like what is one different thing that you have to consider um I I feel like my motto is just just assume everything's gonna go wrong and if it doesn't then you're winning just like you're in a different environment there's you know you've you've got to have to have like your tickets you've got to have to have insurance like you forget something up on the top of the sizzle you got to go back down and get it like and then, yeah, as you mentioned, apart from the size, but the size, like you're up close to something, you can't see, you can't step back and have a look at it. You don't even know what you're painting most of the time. Um, you know, you've got the pressure of it being someone's property. You've got, um, I mean, the last big job that I was on was a big corporate job and I was working on designs and trying to paint a mural at the same time. Like, go figure, I've, there's only one of me, but they wanted designs done like at the same time. So it was just... There's so many other factors. There's a lot more pressure, I think, and that's that's what's hard. You've got to work. Like, you've got to figure out if you do want that sort of pressure or if you just want to be comfortable in your studio. Yeah. Because it's a lot more comfortable in your studio. <laughs> but in saying <laughs> that, I go out on mules. I'm like, oh, get me off. Like, I'm, I'm split. This is like, oh. Uh. And then I get back into my studio. I'm like, okay, I'm bored now. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go back <laughs> on a mural. So there's probably no happy medium yet, but that's all right. Yeah, that's totally okay. Was that recent one that you're talking about, was that for Kia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. You you painted yeah. uh Nadal, right? Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. So, so what was so Kia reached out to you to yeah. what was the event for that? Australian Open. So Okay. Probably like tennis. one of the biggest tennis yeah, yeah tennis grandstands in the world. Um massive, massive international event. So the amount of like foot traffic going through there, um and yeah, I guess it was probably my biggest corporate date uh job to date uh-huh. um and and the most pressure because it, it is it is brutal like in the corporate world it is it is brutal like i appreciate working for companies like that and i would work for them over and over again but mm-hmm. it is tough like oh yeah there was yeah. some I, it's probably why, the reason why i needed time off after because i was like spent emotionally spent <laughs> so yeah um, that makes sense yeah yeah so and but you know what like that's hard because we don't i don't show that on social media and Mm -hmm. i feel like that probably people don't and that's probably what's hard because people looking like oh my god like you're constantly grinding like you're constantly working but like i have my days where i finish work i'm so tired because i do work long hours and i'm like why do i do this myself and but you no one shows that i don't want to whinge like i'm doing what i love so you don't you know you don't want to be one of those people who are complaining (laughs) so i mean that's just that's part of it yeah, but 100%. What would you say is like or has been the best thing and probably like the not most fun thing about running your own business? Best thing would be the freedom to like just duck off and have a holiday or, you know, go see my grandparents or my family like on a Thursday morning. Um, so having that freedom is awesome. The The worst thing is probably – the fact that it's 24 seven, which is not the worst thing. Cause I love it now, but you rarely switch off. Mm-hmm. I'll say that. Like it's, it's, a, it's like you, you're either in it or, or you're not like it's, it's 24. It's constant. If yeah. you want a successful business, it's constant. Like it's yeah. And you, you got to be committed to it and you got to be also, you know, like, and worst thing is if you do drop off the face of the earth for a month, You've got to, you've got to like face the repercussions of that. Like if you disappear for a month, it's hard work to get back on the on the ball, like get back, get the ball rolling again. Yeah, so, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you ever have a backup plan? No. Nah. After you, you graduated, like, I guess. No, nah, no, no, no. Nah. Nah. I never thought, oh, like another job. No. Nah. 
no, no backup plan. I mean, I know I always have my degrees and I think for, as a a female, I think education uh, for everyone, I think education is super important as a female, especially, I think it is super important to have education um, because I feel like a lot of females end up in jobs that they may not want to do or that, you know, they may have the capacity to do more um, Mm. because I feel like education just opens you up to a lot more. Um, not saying that you can't get where you want to be with without it, but I'm just saying I think that it is important. So yeah, I guess I always knew that I had that there, which no one can take. As I said, no one can take that away from me. Like I'm, you know, I'm educated, which is cool. So yeah, I think working and- with corporates, knowing that too, like you have, you know, I've had people make comments like, oh, like didn't know you could, you know, do this as a job. Like didn't know that you, you know, like could study this at university while working on murals. I'm like, actually, yeah, I do have a degree. Like may not be like a completely communicated in this mural, but yeah, it's, um, yeah. So you can shut a few people up with that too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and that's just the thing. It's like, you know, the, the typical like nine to five job, um, it's kind of like the standard for most things, but when you kind of venture out to do something that, you have passion for it's scary it can Mm. be scary i'm sure i'm I'm sure it was scary for you right did you have any doubts you know (laughs) as you started throughout the process um yeah yeah of course and i still do like i still you know like when i don't feel like painting for six weeks i'm like uh should i be doing this like so i think it's normal i think if you don't have that doubts you're not you probably, if you don't doubt like, what you're doing, you're probably complacent. You know what I mean? Like you, yeah. you're not going to, that's how I see it anyway. And I hope that's the case because <laughs> otherwise I'm in trouble. But yeah, no, I think, I think that's normal for anyone at any level. Mm-hmm. I'd hope so. Otherwise I think you're too, you think you're too good for where you are now. And yeah, yeah. And I think that's just the one thing like complacency, like you were talking about, like yeah. that's if, if you become complacent, I mean, like, what are you doing? You know, it's, it, I don't yeah. know. It, it's just, especially for an entrepreneur, um, it's all about growth. I mm, think, 100%. you know, you have to keep growing. Yeah. So, I mean, what, what kind of encouraged you to, whenever you had those doubts to keep going, you know, and, and keep growing? Good question. I don't know. I, mean, I, mean, I think I like, I've always been a bit of a fierce person. Like they used to call me, um, I used to play tennis and they used to call me like Jack Russell because like they're like really Oh like the Terrier? Persi- yeah, like really persistent. Like they chase everything down. So I've always had that nickname. And I, I think I think it's just in me. I'm like, I'm not gonna back down now. Like not because I care about what other people think, but I'm like, I've come this far. So like, like well, why would I, you know? So I guess, yeah, like I I do have those those thoughts often. Um, but it's just not, it's not really in me to, to give up and go backwards. Like I always want to, if I do take 10 steps back, I always want to come back and take 20 more steps forward. So yeah, I guess there's nothing really that like kept motivating me, but probably the people, like probably my family, like they've got a massive part in, in my art. Like if, if, if it wasn't for them, like I wouldn't be doing this. So they, yeah, they keep me motivated. That's they good. wouldn't let and me give up either. <laughs> no, no, I'm sure. No. Yeah. I mean, they they were pretty much supporting you from the beginning for art, and right? they still do. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. good. That yeah. is very good. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so, and I think great. that's one of the things too, like the like the family aspect, especially yeah. if you're doing what you love to do. If you have a family that's supportive, like oh man, that's that's gold right there. A hundred percent. Yeah. Did you I, from the start? Yeah. Um, yeah. well, my mom, she, she's a nurse, but she's yeah. an artist as well. Oh, so cool. she, she loves to, she baked cakes, um, when she moved here from the Philippines. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and I think that's kind of where like, I got like the artist yes. uh, aspect too, yeah. but yeah, hundred yeah, percent, um, definitely, definitely, um, encouraging from the yes. beginning. So, yeah. you know, I'm very thankful for that. So well, because sure there's a you, lot of road yeah. roadblocks on the way, and if you have your like a family is a roadblock too, that's just going to make it you know a hundred times harder. So <laughs> yeah, like that that's like the one roadblock that you don't you don't want. So I do sympathize with people that have you know parents being like, no, you need to be a lawyer or you need to do this. And I'm very passionate actually about 
doing school talks not to people, not to parent, not to um, students, actually talking about to the parents because that's where mm-hmm. the issue stems from a lot of the time. You know, it's the parents dictating what they're going to do. So I think that's a massive issue. I feel like it's getting better, uh, you know, as the years go yeah, on. Yeah, it's but, getting better. Um, um, it still, yeah, sort of worries me that they're not conscious of their child mental health or, you know, happiness essentially. Mm-hmm. So, but, um, yeah, no, that's awesome that you've had support from the get-go. It's super important. So, Yeah, I mean, hopefully, you know, for anyone else, like, it hopefully it gets better and better, like you yeah. said. I mean, at least now in, like, society, everything is opening up in terms of businesses, like yeah. the, the business uh, field. Like, there's other opportunities out there than just doing the usual nine-to-five. Yeah. So there's more freelancers out yeah, there definitely. and things yeah. like that, which is a good thing. So yeah, hopefully- which I feel like other freelancers bounce off each other as well with like motivation. They see them doing like, oh, so it's pretty powerful. And that's, I guess, the power of social media too. So yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah. So your creative process, um, how do you go about that? Like let's say, for example, um, like a company or a brand reaches out to you to let's say do a mural right Mm -hmm. like because i've seen the ones you've done like the michael jordan one the rock one nadal they reach out to you where do you start and then how does that progress over to when you finish it um so i I do like to choose my own photos because i know what's um what's communicated best as a mural um and what like some people send me photos i'm like oh no that's not good like you know for a painting it's a cool photo but um so generally if they give me freedom on that like i'll just gather a whole lot of inspo mood boards play around with but black and white color um i used to do a lot of sketching and now obviously the digital world's taken over so i do a lot of um, mock-ups on my ipad Mm-hmm. Um, which is good because you can do it to scale. I, I don't know how I used to actually do murals without it because I used to go and just hope for the best. But now I can actually draw it up to scale and know, you know, how much space I have to work with. Uh-huh. Um, so, yeah, creative process, I guess it varies with what client you're working for. Um, most of the time I'm pretty fortunate enough to have um, freedom, but then they'll just say we want this, 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 especially if there's a lot more to the mural than one sole portrait. So, um, yeah, look, it, it, design processes aren't the probably like you've always got to do the not so fun things and like th- they're fun creating because they're exciting, but they're mm-hmm. also hard because sometimes you it's back and forwards and you're making changes and, you know, sometimes your visions might not align. So, um, yeah, I think you've just got to trust that like I, I'm just, I'm a big believer like if I'm, you know, if I make a mistake or if something's not sort of how I'm wanting it to go, I'm just like, it's happened for a reason. Keep going. Like, and that, that's, I just blow it. Like I just brush it off. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, and then to, to painting it, um, I just, I guess if we want details, I just like work off of my phone and, (laughs) but a lot of the time the design does change as I'm painting it too. So that's hard. Yeah. Like I'll sort of get, you know, because when you're sort of sitting at a desk, like trying to do a design, you're like, Oh, like, it's quite hard to push that out. Whereas when you're mm-hmm. painting, you start, you know, having some flow. I always come up with other ideas and, and most of the, you know, nine times out of 10, I do it without, you know, consulting and they're like, Oh, that's so much better. Or that's really cool. So mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. And like same with like sp- paint splatters, etc. Like, I don't know where the paint's going to go. Like I can't really, <laughs> <laughs> most of the time I'm just flinging it like yeah. and not knowing what's going to happen. So yeah. But most people are pretty good in the sense that they trust that I'll, you know, if I'm going to make changes, it'll be for the better. So that's good. Yeah. Especially yeah. the fact that they trust you and let you do your thing yeah. as an artist. That's, yeah. that's, you know, freeing, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It, so. I'm sure it definitely takes a lot of pressure off of your shoulders. <laughs> while yes. You're painting. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, there's still, there's yeah. still guidelines and still, Oh yeah. Still hard to, yeah. Yeah. So sometimes it's a bit hard too because you be, you may you may want to be a little bit more crazy, a little bit more out there. But working with corporates and bigger companies, you have to be a little bit more respectful of their vision and their brand. So that's true because it's, it's kind of like a a balance, like a compromise too. I'm sure, definitely, especially when Constant. you're working with a client, like you you want to obviously push, you know, your 
kind of a uh, vision of what it wants to be but then also you have to kind of work along the lines like you were saying with the client as well yes yes right definitely. yeah was there yeah. one what's like one challenge or failure that you've experienced as an artist or you know in your business and how did you overcome that a good question I think I'm, I think I'm like constantly faced with general challenges, like people trying to beat down the price. Um, I wouldn't, I'm trying to think failures. I feel like it would stand out to me straight away if I could recall anything. Um, trying to think. Yeah. I, I feel, I feel like the, the constant battle or challenge would be the the pricing thing, like knowing your your worth and not underquoting yourself, not undercutting your work. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess it's hard because it's something that you love to do. So a lot of the time you would do it for free, but then yeah. it's something that you're so good at doing, so you shouldn't be doing it for free. So uh -huh. I think that's a constant challenge. But in terms of failures, I, I don't. I don't like there's been pieces that I've done and I'm like, oh wow, that's so bad. Like I'd if I could take that one back. But I think I think it's it's all those things that make you become the artist that you you are. Like and, and I I don't I don't believe that I'm at a place that I will like I think I've got so much more to learn and um still, you know, developing my style. I feel like I don't really haven't really adapted my own style yet. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's because my work's so broad and it's, it's quite versatile. So, and I'm happy doing that for now. You know, I might not find my own style until I might not never find it. Like I might just enjoy constantly painting different things in your different styles. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So fair, is that I'll get back to you on that one. I can't think of it. <laughs> yeah. That's totally, that's yeah. totally fine. Totally fine. Yeah. yeah. Cause, yeah. um, I mean, I think what, like you were saying, um, like the prices and things like that, um, you know, like, let's say someone, you know, comes up to you and says, hey, can I, why can't it be like a lower price or something? Like, how do you handle that specifically? Like, do you stand um, your ground majority of the time? Yeah. Because I, I know, I know you have um, like a management uh, company that does yes. all the pricing, but like, for example, like, do you, like you said, you stand your ground. Is that what you said? Yeah. 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 I, I do now, especially because... Like I'm a true believer of like you get what you pay for. So if, if you want good work, like you you pay what I've quoted um, because I, I, I get I get annoyed when people do things that I wouldn't do. I think that's my main thing in life. Like if if someone's like quite abrupt or rude about it, I'm like, mm. like I would never I would never say that to anyone, and that's what upsets me most. Whereas if someone's actually quite reasonable about it and say, hey, like you know, like that's not in our budget. Um, then I'm a little bit, maybe, you know, I might work with them on that. Like there's things that you can do to not, to, you know, to lower the price, but then I'll lower the amount of work that I put in. Do you know what I mean? So that's a compromise mm -hmm. there. I'm happy to do that. But if people's straight out saying, Hey, take, you know, a couple of thousand off the price, I'll be like, yeah, no, like you, th that appreciation isn't there. So you, yeah. you can go elsewhere, but I'm like, I'm, I've honestly, like I've learned, like, don't be rude. I'm never rude. Um, as much as you get, you know, some rude emails and messages sometimes and I'm like, oh, like I'm never, like I never, I never bite back. Maybe uh -huh. I'll be a smart ass sometimes, but it's <laughs> in, in business, like you can't, cause you're always yeah. going to look like the asshole. If you're right. A, no matter yeah. how much of an asshole someone else is, if you're an asshole back, you lose. Like, <laughs> so yeah, it's all um, about, you know, communicating, I'm sure. Right. Yeah. 100%. Clearly, but also in a professional manner. Yes. At the same time. Yeah. 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 yeah, definitely. So that's a hard, that's a hard one there. Um, but then, you know, as I mentioned earlier, like this is people who say, Hey, like how much do you charge for murals artists, aspiring artists? Mm -hmm. And I'll say, how long have you been painting for? And they're like a year. And I was like, why are you asking me how much I charge for my murals then? And they don't get it. And I'm like, you know, an aspiring actor wouldn't go up to Dwayne Johnson and be like, Hey, how much should I charge for my you know, how much do you charge? Like, how much should I charge? Like, they're asking, and I'm, I'm do you know what I mean? Like, it's like, hey, oh, hang yeah, on a second. Yeah. Like, I'm 10 years mm -hmm. down the track. Like, you can't be asking me what I charge because it's going to be completely different, right? you know, to what you charge. So, 
Um, I think that's something like who are people who are in this game? Like big, I've, I, and that's what I mean. Like I've never gone up to someone and be like, Hey, how much do you charge for your paintings? Hey, how much should I charge? Like I've figured everything out on my own. So I guess mm-hmm. it, it shits me a little bit when I've, you know, have <laughs> questions like that or like, yeah, I think, I, I think that's a, a big one. It's a bit of an iffy one for the whole money side of things. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, I mean, it's one of those things where like as an artist and as, as, as in a creative, you know, you're like, you want to, you wish you can do everything, mm. you know, for, yeah. you know, for free, but still get paid the right way. Yeah, but it's exactly. not. I mean, it's one of those things. If you're running your business, it's it's a balance, and yeah. I think it's it's something that you're going to be working with all throughout your career. Yeah, you definitely. Know? And that that's yeah. totally fine. Yeah. 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 Hundred percent. Definitely. So what? I know we talked about like creative process, but w- how do you stay creative as an artist? I know yeah. you said travel. Is there anything else? Um, I think working on a lot of pieces at the same time. I feel like if I, I used to work on just one piece, I'd be bored and it just wouldn't excite me. So I think having a lot of pieces on the go is a big tip um, because, it, yeah, just sort of like if I get bored of one piece, I'll move to the other one and I'll start another one. And um, so I think I think doing that is is super exciting. Um, a lot of people are always like, oh, do you like, you know, aspire to be like any other artist? And I don't feel like that's the right way to go to stay creative. I feel like you might. Um, like subconsciously you know be- become then more or your work would become very similar mm-hmm. put not- yourself in a box yeah. yeah yeah so I feel I, I wouldn't encourage that but I mean that's each to their own um, art teachers encourage that so cool um, yeah. maybe for technique and stuff but not their actual subject matter yeah um, yeah saying creative I think just balance I never I never had that balance for the first sort of five six years like I literally would just paint all the time just all the time like I'd be I'd be painting like until eight o'clock in the morning and my parents would be like are you going to bed or are you getting up and I'm like oh but I haven't really slept like I've just been painting all night <laughs> so and I think I think it was good for, to get me where I am now but I know now it's de- like I still want to do it sometimes I'm still you know painting late and I'm like oh, I could you know I could work all night right now but I, I don't anymore because I know it's not it's not, it's not practical yeah. And it, yeah, like you do hit walls and I got pretty like sick <laughs> at one oh, point really? because I was like not sleeping. I think I'd sleep like three hours a night or something Jeez. and just go again. I just get up again and start painting again. So, but I don't, you, I get, don't. you get lost in it sometimes. You it's, do, it's, yeah. it's natural. But know? no, I have, I have a balanced lifestyle now. Like I know yeah. that I have to spend time with family and friends and, right. and go to the gym and yeah, so that's important yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> i mean I'm, there's a point where you're like all right I, nah, I gotta i gotta balance everything you yeah know? yeah so the last sort of two years two and a half years since i've been with my partner he's sort of leveled me out a little bit <laughs> that's good that's yeah. good that's important yeah. now networking tips i mean do you have any networking tips i know uh instagram is a big thing for you um do you reach out to people sometimes um when you let's say let's say create like a piece and you want to showcase the work or how how do you go about doing that I, I i don't and i probably should i probably i could probably put my hand up and say i haven't utilized um utilized my instagram following or or instagram um to its best ability but i guess i guess i just sort of see it like oh well i've got work so you know i've got more than i can probably handle at the moment so I don't really want to create more stress for myself. Um, I don't want to say it's being lazy. I just, I don't really want to bother people. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Like I get a lot of people being like, hey, share this for me. Like, hey, follow me. Or, hey, can you do this? And I'm like, like, I would never, like I've I've never done that. (laughs) I'd feel really awkward doing that. Yeah. So I guess I've always sort of been a bit like, oh, like I just sit back and do my own thing. Um, which, yeah, I, pr- I probably know that I can improve a lot and I can probably mm-hmm. utilize it a lot more. So it's mm-hmm. something I'd say, like, use it. If you've got it, use it. I probably need to do a little bit more work on that. Definitely. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think you're, I think you're doing a good job because from a majority of the pieces that you put out there, I mean, you tag, you hashtag and everything, but yeah. I don't think it, but like you said, I don't think it's one of those things where 
like let's say you do a piece because like the conor mcgregor uh mm-hmm. portrait that you did that's a really good one like i know you tagged him but you can't go into that i'm sure thinking like all right well he, i hope he reposts he better repost it type thing yeah nah, nah. no it, can, it can't be like that <laughs> yeah yeah it should be like I, I i think it's for you like you put it out there well obviously because it's something that you like to do you think it's great artwork but if they happen to repost it then they repost it but at yeah, least it's definitely. out there for people to see 100 you know? and you never know yeah. who's watching you either and that's oh, the yeah. main thing that i say like you actually sometimes people find me for jobs i'm like how did you and they're like oh like this person was following you and i was like you just don't know who oh, and that's yeah. why i think you've got to hold yourself you know like me and i'm quite professional like i have a really whacked out personality and i used to do stupid shit on social media <laughs> so i've really toned that down because you just you just like as much as I'm all about being yourself, uh-huh. I feel I feel like when you get to a certain level in business, you do have to be conscious of like what you're doing, who you surround yourself with. Um, you know, yeah, I won't go in. Yeah, I was just like I'm, I'm a bit of a crazy human. Like I'm I'm an artist, so that's just probably. I mean, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's just yeah. part but of I'm it. A you bit know, careful now of like what I post because I know that you don't know who's watching. So. Oh yeah, I mean you're you're you're. Uh... You're basically like your own brand, you know. Yes. You you have Especially to. Especially if you got your name on your business, like that's. Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. You can't. You, you, get can't, away from you that. can't be posting like all these other crazy photos anymore because if you're dealing with corporate now and all that, you know, they they look at that as well. So yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Understandably, it's, these big brands like they, you know, they've they've started from somewhere and they, you know, they've got to protect themselves too. They're not going to throw away what they've worked on for the last however yeah. many years. So. Yeah, yeah, which is fair enough. Some people don't get that. They're like, why do you have to get all your posts approved? And it's like, well, because they've got someone representing them and, you know, they're a multi, multi million dollar company and they don't know what I'm capable of posting. So, yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, so, so many things to think about. So, do you have any, um, any advice to like your younger self now that you know what you know now that you would give? Nah. Wouldn't change anything. <laughs> I, no, no, like I literally look back and I'm like, I think everything, you know, like the things that I've been through and the travel that I've done, like I wouldn't go back and be like, do do that. I, like, I, I mean, I didn't know that I was going to end up here. So I, I guess that's what's exciting too because it's not as if I was like, I have a dream and like I, you know, chase that dream and I've ended up here. So I guess, yeah, advice, like, probably, I probably don't have any. Like, I'm pretty happy with how everything's gone, even all, like, the mistakes and could have, should have, would have. But it's, like, I'm just a big believer in everything happens for a reason. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's good. I can't think of anything. Yeah. (laughs) That's a a good uh, mindset to have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even, like, you know, loss and like you know you get obviously everyone goes through sadness and troubles and everything like i'm just always like yep come at me like it's obviously happening for a reason <laughs> yeah, yeah just take so, it and move on yeah that, that's yeah, exactly. it yeah 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 definitely so what is what is like your why why do you keep you know doing what you are doing now i think at the end of the day you have to love it to do something like this you have to love it because there's so many highs and lows Sometimes you hit, sometimes you hit the like the highs, and then you know you, you finish a big mural, the rock shares it, and then you know it's all crazy, and then you're like, oh, and there's always going to be a low after a high. So um, that's hard. I think uh, sometimes you're like, I wish I didn't go through those highs because then the lows wouldn't be so low. Um, but like, I guess I just always wanted to improve, and I think I've seen that I've inspired a lot of like young females, young artists. So it's a combination of things. Like, you know, a lot of people um, love your work. Um, like I'm, you know, go out sometimes. People are like, oh, I like love your artwork. I'm like, that's so weird. Like it's so strange. It's like a random but, person comes yeah, up to you. Yeah, but I'm just like, that's so nice too. You know, like I, I think when you you're talented at something, it's like. You don't really think much of it. You're like, oh, cool. Like, I, I just paint. Like, it's not a big deal. Like, I just, I just paint shit. Like, it's not. Yeah. But it's, yeah. And I think that keeps you going because you're like, oh, wow, cool. Like, I obviously made an impact on that person's life. And, and I guess the, the, the impact that you do, that you can make on one's life, 
whether it's a buyer or whether it's an aspiring, aspiring artist through your art is pretty cool. So I think that keeps me going as well. Makes my It makes my family happy. I know that. They're pretty proud. So definitely all those things. Yeah. Yeah, because you, you don't realize it, but <laughs> I guess, you know, there's people out there that, you know, really, really enjoy what you're doing. But yeah. until, especially, I guess, because it's, you know, through social media and all that stuff, you only see numbers and things like that. Maybe yeah. a few, couple comments here and there, but like when you actually see a person come up to you in like the real world yeah, and they yeah. say, Hey, I like what you're doing. I was like, Oh, yeah. wow. okay. Oh, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, so that, that's very fun. impactful for sure. It's rewarding. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. So what's in it for your future? Like any future plans? Um, where do you see yourself taking this? Um, I do want to have an exhibition in the near, near future. Um, just to do something for myself. I've always been so busy painting what other people wanted and orders and things like that. So I found it hard to put my own collection together. So I think when I'm ready, that'll happen. Um, bigger, bigger murals, I think just go bigger. But I, at the moment, I'm probably, you know, still learning on the scale that I am now. So I'm happy. I'm happy with that. Um, so, yeah, future is just bigger murals. Eventually, I'll probably want to write a book um, and um, – maybe do some some talks and things like that in in the future yeah definitely very cool that's for now that's good well yeah (laughs) Yeah. i wish you all the best i mean that that's it that's you know that's it for the podcast thanks for being on again that's awesome thank you so much for having me it's been awesome yeah of course thanks again for listening to this episode i hope you enjoyed it as much as i did i'll be placing danielle's social media links in the show notes so you can stay connected And if you receive great content out of this episode and know someone that can benefit from it, please share it. So thanks again for joining in. And until next time, I'll see you in the next episode. Peace.